This is not the only video I'm going to make on the eigenvalue problem. I'm going to make a better one, but I want to do it uh, in an easy situation first. So what is the eigenvalue problem? This is it right here. And I remember, I remember looking at this as an undergrad and going, what is the deal with that stupid equation? A R equals lambda R, well, A equals lambda. That would be true, except that A is a matrix or an operator and lambda is a scalar and then R would be the vector. So th what this says is I'm gonna take some operation of a matrix multiplied by a vector, and I'm gonna get back that same vector with a scalar multiplier, and that is the eigenvalue problem. And you may be thinking, who cares? What's the big deal? Well, it actually turns out to be a very big deal on, in some situations. Um, my favorite, because I like classical mechanics, is this, uh, I omega equals L. This says that the moment of inertia and multiplied by the angular velocity gives you the angular momentum, but they don't have to be in the same direction, right? But they could be, but they don't have to be. So find the principle, the, the directions of angular velocity that give you the same direction as the angular momentum is kind of a big deal. Um, it also shows up in normal mode. So if you had multiple things uh, oscillating uh, and you want to find the modes that they oscillate in uh, some standard way, that's, that's an eigenvalue problem. Uh, quantum mechanics is an eigenvalue problem. Solving a differential equation with numerical methods uses the eigenvalue problem. Okay, so let's just do it. Here is my, I want to do this. I want to find the eigenvalues and the eigenvectors for this matrix right here, two, three, two, one. Um, yes, it's a pretty easy matrix, um, but you got to start somewhere. So we want to find what vectors that I could operate on this, operate on this, what vectors would give me the same vector with a scalar. Okay, so how do I solve this problem for the values of R? Well, I'm gonna take this equation, I'm gonna rewrite it. I'm gonna say A, R, and I'm, I'm writing, people do this differently. Uh, some people write the a matrix as a bold. Uh, some people put other symbols on it. I'm just gonna leave it as A, and I'm gonna use my vectors with the arrow like you would in physics. Uh, I'm going to write this as lambda, the I, which is just a scalar, times the identity matrix times R. And of course, the identity matrix 1 is 1, 0, 0, 1. So if I do that, I get the same thing, right? I can multiply, operate 1 with R, and I get the same vector. So that's fine. I didn't really change anything. But now I can subtract this from both sides, and I get A, R, minus lambda, 1 r equals 0. And that is the 0 vector because it's still a vector solution. But now I can factor out this r and I get a minus lambda 1 r equals 0. So how do I solve this equation? Well, I could have the solution where r is equal to 0. We call that boring. Right, because if this is zero is equal to zero, then duh. So the other way is to say that this thing has to, to somehow be zero. And one thing we can do with that is to say the determinant of this is zero. So let's write out this one minus, uh, this a minus lambda one is just gonna be this, two minus lambda, three, two, one minus lambda. And I wanna take the determinant of that instead of the equal to zero. And then that has that will give me my eigenvalues lambda. So let's try that out. I'm going to write it on another piece of paper because I'm running out of room. I want to have plenty of room. So uh, I want to take the determinant of 2 minus lambda 3 to 1 minus lambda equal to 0 instead of equal to 0. So if I do that, let's take the determinant of this two by two matrix, and you'll notice I'm doing two by two matrix because I'm not crazy, okay? I don't want to do a three by three. Nobody wants to do a three by three. Nobody wants to do a four by four. So we're going to use Python for, I'm going to show you to do this in Python too, uh, because two by two is okay, but after that it gets bad. So to take the determinant, I'm just going to take this times this minus this times this instead of equal to zero. So I get two minus lambda times one minus lambda minus uh, 6 equals 0 because that's 3 times 2. Now I want to find the values for lambda, so let's <clears throat> multiply uh, this out. I get uh, 2 
2 times 1, minus uh, 2 lambda minus 1 lambda plus lambda squared minus 6 equals 0. And so I can write that as uh, I'm going to combine this together and I get, I'm going to write it lambda squared minus 3 lambda minus 4 equals 0. I just combined those two, I combined those two. Now I have a quadratic equation. You can use the quadratic, the, the quadratic formula if you want to solve this, that's fine. But you can also factor, if you can factor this, this is a little bit easier. The quadratic is factoring, okay? There's no difference. But if I write this as lambda, just by guessing, I need um, something times something gives me negative four and something plus something is equal to negative three. Well, I could use negative four and one. So negative four lambda uh, plus one equals zero. So then if I have negative four times one is negative four, and then when I add these together, I get negative three. So this tells me that in order for this to be true, lambda is equal to four, we'll call that lambda one, or lambda two is equal to negative one. So we have two eigenvalues. Those are our eigenvalues. But we need to find our eigenvectors, okay? So to find our eigenvectors, what we're going to do is to, let's start with lambda is equal to four. I'm gonna put this back into my equation and, and then I can, I can go from there. So let's, I'm gonna do this the, the way that we did it, um, the way that I like to do it. So let's go back over here and say, a r equals four r. Ooh, focus, okay. And so going back to my original function, my original matrix, I have uh, two, three, two, one, and I'll call r x y is equal to four x y. And I'm writing those both as uh, column vectors just because that's the way we do it in physics because we're weird. You know, you could argue it should be a, should be a row matrix vector. I don't really care. So let's just do this operation. So this says two, three, times x, y, I can write that as 2x plus 3y, and that's gonna be equal to four times x. I'm just doing this operation. And then I also get this, 2x plus y equals 4y. Now, this is these are two equations, two unknowns, but they're actually kind of redundant, okay? They don't tell me anything new. I can't actually solve for x and y. There's an infinite number of solutions here. But I can take this one. Let's just take this, track 2x from both sides, and I get 3y equals 2x. And what's something that I can pick for x and y that would work? I mean, I'm just going to pick something, okay? I, I don't, I just have to pick value of y and then the corresponding value of x. There are an infinite number. You can pick whatever you want. So it, if I pick y is equal to 2 and x is equal to 3, I get 3 times 2, 2 times 3, so that works. So let's say r1 is equal to the vector 3, 2. Let's just check. Let's just check if this does work. Let's check if this equation works. So if I do my operation again, 2, 3, 2, 1, and I operate that on 3, 2, what do I get? Well, I get 2 times 3 is 6, plus 3 times 2 is 6, so I get... Uh, 12. And then over here I get 2 times 3 is 6 plus 2 is 8. And that's not the same, but you notice here that I actually can factor out a 4, and this becomes 4 times 3, 2. So it worked. Yay. Now, what you will often see is a normalized vector. An infinite number will work, right? I could put in any uh, ratio of these and it would work. I can multiply both sides by two, put that in right there, and I'll get, it'll still work. But let's find a normalized vector. So let's find the magnitude of R1. The magnitude of R1 is gonna be the square root of nine plus four, which is the square root of 13. Yeah. So now R1 hat, the, the normalized version, is gonna be one over the square root of 13 three, two, and I don't have my calculator with me, but we could we could plug that in if we want to. Now let's go look at the other uh, eigenvalue. So 
We're gonna do this again, but instead of four, I'm gonna put in negative one, right? Because my other eigenvalue was lambda zero, it was negative one. So I have two, three, two, one, x, y, negative one, x, y. So let's operate this out into equations. I get two x plus three y equals negative x. And the other one, which is gonna be redundant, is two x plus y is negative y. So if I solve this, let's just uh, get a relationship over here. I'm gonna add, I'm gonna subtract two x from both sides and I get three y is negative three x or y is negative x. So how about this? y equals one, x equals negative one. Or um, I think I could put, I could do it the other way. I could say x equals negative one, y equals one, which is what I just said. <laughs> I wanted to do that. Okay, I was thinking about something else. Well, let's check. Let's check and see if that is indeed an eigenvector. So I'm gonna redo the operation. You don't have to do this unless you just aren't sure of yourself. Two, one, um, and then I'm gonna put in, let's do this one, one negative one. What's that gonna give me? What's gonna give me right here? Two times one is two, minus three is minus one, that's right. And then down here I get two times one is two, minus one is gonna be one. And you'll notice that that is this if I factor out a negative sign. So this is negative one times one negative one, which is what I got. So that one works. Now we need to normalize this two. So R2 is equal to the vector negative one, one. <clears throat> R2 hat, uh, let's find the magnitude of R2. That's pretty easy. It's gonna be the square root of one plus one, which is the square root of two. So this is one over the square root of two times negative one, one. So we found our eigenvalues and our eigenvectors. Now let's go over to Python, because if we can do this in Python, see the nice thing, if I can do this on paper and then I can do it in Python and they agree, then when I go to a eight by eight matrix, which there's no way you're gonna do that on your own, I promise you you're not gonna do that. Um, even a three by three is, I, I just don't feel like I should punish people by giving them a three by three matrix unless it's like trivial, uh, they're really hard. Okay, let's jump over here to Python. I am using real Python. And so uh, you can do real Python in, in two very common ways. Number one is to install Jupyter Notebooks. Um, Anaconda is a great place to do that. And the other way is to use Google Colab, which is an online Jupyter Notebook, which both of them work fine. Um, I'm gonna use this one. Now, the first thing we need to do is to import a module in order to be able to handle mathematical functions. And that module is called NumPy and you may call it NumPy, I'm gonna say that every single time, you call it however you want. So I need to import that, import NumPy as NP, and then I'm gonna run that cell just to make sure everything's fine. Now I need to create my A matrix. So in, in Python, we can make a matrix as an array, which is really a useful tool, but I'm gonna say A, oops, A is equal to NP.array, it's a, it's a type, and I'm gonna give it uh, a two, basically two lists of lists. So the first list is gonna be the top row, which is two, three, oh, I need another comma right here. And then the second row is gonna be uh, two, one, and then I'm missing another parenthesis right, the bracket right there. And let's print that. It's, it's very useful to print these things to make sure you get what you want and you think or you're getting, and that is what I wanted. Okay. We're pretty much done, right? Because now I just need to call the eigenvalue function. There's a function in NumPy that will find the eigenvalues and the eigenvectors of the thing. And so I need to find, it will return two values, the eigenvalues and the eigenvectors. So let's do that. I'm gonna call it A and W. I've been doing that, I don't know why. So A is the eigenvalues and W are the eigenvectors. And I just need to use np.linearalg, which is linalg dot eig, and then I give it the func the matrix I want A. Now I'm gonna print A, oh not A, print A, and I'm gonna print uh, W, and run it. I don't wanna print this again. 
Okay, so there's my eigenvalues. That's the same thing I got, four and negative one. That's good, right? Now this looks weird because it's not what we expected, but it is what we expected. There's a first problem, number one problem, is that uh, this lists the uh, eigenvectors as columns. So here's my first eigenvector, 0 0.83, 0 0.55, and here's my other one, negative 0 0.7, 0 0.7. You can see right here that is that negative one, one, which I wrote as one, negative one, but it doesn't really matter. Um, so let's print these out as just normal vectors. I can do that with the transpose of a vector of a matrix. So I'm going to take the transpose of the matrix and then print out the first one. So we can call this uh, W1 is going to be W dot T that takes a transpose. And then I want the first element and we can see what that looks like. So there, there it is, right? There's that first eigen vector. Uh, and then we can do the same thing. Uh, w2 equals w dot t uh, 1. That's the first, second element. And then print w2. Now let's just check, right? I'm going to check this one. Uh, I said that was equal to, what did I have? Uh, 3 divided by the square root of 13. Let's just double check. So print uh, 3 divided by np dot square root 13. And then let's print the other one, uh, print 2 divided by np dot square root 13, just to see if we get the right things. And yes, we do. So it is all working and everything is great. So we have shown that we can do a 2 by 2 eigenvalue problem without too much work. And, and it agrees with uh, Python. And so that means that if I want to do a 3 by 3 or even more complicated eigenvalue problems, I can and I trust it will work. The end. And I am going to do another eigenvalue problem, um, one that is involves a 3 by 3 and angular momentum. It's going to be great, uh, but it's a little bit more complicated. And that's why I wanted to do this one separately. So we'd have just a plain 2 by 2 eigenvalue problem. And there you go, the end. Hope that helps. Talk to you later.